Crafting in Last Epoch may be the one thing holding you back from pushing corruption, finishing the campaign, or just having fun with your build. In this guide, I will cover everything you need to know about crafting as a beginner, as well as some tips and tricks for the more intermediate. With it, you can improve your gear, gaining more power and more utility to progress further into the game. Affixes are the lines of stats and modifiers on your gear that alter your character to possibly make them stronger. And finding the exact piece of gear with the exact affixes you want may be near impossible to do, at least consistently. But with this mechanic, we can reduce the amount of luck there is involved with getting stronger. So let's go over the basics of crafting. You can press F from anywhere to access the forge. You do not have to be at or near the anvil in town. My friend got to level 100 before finding out you can do this. He was running to the anvil for every single craft. Don't be like my friend. Press F. The only items that you will need for crafting is your equipment, like weapons, armor, jewelry, or any item that you want to alter, upgrade, or salvage. And affix shards, which are the individual affixes as crafting material that we can put on any piece of gear that has forger potential. You can find them on the ground from shrines as rewards for monoliths and dungeons or just salvage them from gear. Every craftable item has forger potential, which you can see right here. Forger potential is the amount of points an item has to be allowed to craft on. Each time you use an affix shard or rune on an item, the forge potential goes down. You cannot make any more changes on an item when it hits zero. The left side of the forge is for adding prefixes, which are typically offensive modifiers, and the right side will be for adding suffixes, which are usually defensive modifiers. You can have only two of each on an item, unless there's one sealed affix, which we will cover later. Press the plus sign on the left to add a prefix and the plus sign on the right to add a suffix. If you already have affixes on the item, there's a smaller arrow where the affix is, where you can press to upgrade an affix tier higher. If there isn't an arrow, then the affix is either maxed out or you do not own any of the required affix shards to upgrade. Now click the Add Affix button to Forge. Your affix is now added onto the item. You can see the tier labeled by the T and its tier number under the affix. You can also view the tier and role you have for that affix if you press and hold both Alt and Control together while hovering over the item. Keep in mind the amount of forging potential you are using per craft. You can see how much potential you're using right here. You may also lose more potential the higher the tier and the more you forge an item. There are glyphs that can change how much potential you can lose. Glyphs and runes are materials that can aid in your crafting, so let's go over those too. Glyphs alter interactions when we are upgrading affixes on an item. The glyphs we have available are Glyph of Hope, Glyph of Chaos, Glyph of Order, Glyph of Despair, Glyph of Insight. Glyph of Hope gives you a 25% chance to use none of the forger potential on use. I'd recommend always using one when possible. Glyph of Chaos will change the affix you are upgrading to a completely different one. The affix will be random but within the pool of shards you possess and it will also upgrade its tier. Use this when you don't like an affix on your item but don't mind what else it can turn into. Glyph of Order will retain the roll value of the affix being upgraded. So if you have a max roll for that affix and you want to retain that on upgrade, use one of these and you'll have the max roll on the next tier. Glyph of Despair gives you a chance to seal away the affix when upgrading, making it untouchable as well as freeing up its slot for another affix. This is one of the ways you can get 5 affixes on an item. This glyph is also very rare so use it sparingly. Also, the higher the tier, the more likely these will fail. So tier 1 is easier to seal than tier 4. Glyph of Insight is an interesting glyph. It will turn the upgrading affix into a predetermined experimental affix. The glyph will roll a different experimental affix depending on the number of tiers already on the item. You can use this tool here to calculate which experimental affix you will be getting. And then we have the runes. Runes give us new interaction options when upgrading an item. The runes we have available are Rune of Shattering, Refinement, Removal, Discovery, Shaping, Ascendance, Creator, and Research. Rune of Shattering destroys the item and gives you affix shards. It'll give you the amount of shards between 1 and its tier, so if you have a tier 4 affix, you can get anywhere from 0 to 4 shards from it. These can be purchased from any equipment vendor for 2000 gold and will be the rune you use the most, since this will be your primary source of accumulating shards. Rune of Refinement rerolls all of your affixes to a new roll within its range. If you dislike one of your low rolls on one of your affixes, you can use one of these to reroll all your affixes in hopes that they're all high. You need forging potential to reroll, so keep that in mind when you're spamming it. 
Ruin of removal removes a random affix from an item as well as salvage all of its shards. Use this when you want to remove an unwanted affix and are willing to risk removing a desired one. You can also use this to salvage all the shards from an item at a 100% return rate. Ruin of Discovery adds a random tier 1 affix to all empty affix slots, without using forging potential. Use this when you already have an affix you want on an item, but are looking to fill the empty slots with anything. Ruin of Shaping rerolls the values of an implicit to new rolls within its range. Implicits are the natural modifiers on an item that appear under its name. Some implicits don't have a range, so make sure you check. Rune of Ascendance turns any white, blue, yellow, or purple item into an orange unique item of the same type. Use this if you're really looking for a certain unique and have an abundance of Rune of Ascendances, which are pretty rare, so use these sparingly as well. If you need something like a Frozen Ire, then you could use one of these on any blue one-handed scepter for a chance to get a Frozen Ire, but you may end up with 8 Halo Roots instead. Check this tool for probabilities from using Rune of Ascendance. Rune of Creation are super rare runes that can clone an item but will lower the forging potential all the way to zero. Use this if you find something with very good affixes and rolls that you want two of. Typically exalt with great rolls that you want to save to roll on an LP3. Now you have two tries for something truly amazing. Or duplicate rings or one-handed weapons for each hand. Or copy it for one of your other characters to use. Rune of Research lets you seal an experimental affix, making it untouchable, as well as freeing up its slot for another affix to use. Unlike Lift of Despair, it has a 100% success rate and only works on experimental affixes. Using one of these also gives a chance to drop Glyph of Insight, which is the only way to get these. So make sure you keep fighting those exiled mages. Now let's get to the items themselves. Equipment items are split into several categories. Common, which are white, magic, blue, Rare, Yellow, Unique, Orange, Set, Green, Exalted, Purple, and Legendary, Red. Each category has its own uses and value. Common items are base items without any affixes and low forging potential. These items have very low value so it's best to not use these if we can. Magic items have two affixes on them. These will probably be the item you see the most during the beginning of the game. You can craft with them or salvage their affixes, so they'll be a great introduction to crafting in the early game. Rare items have three or more affixes and will probably be your primary boost of power as you finish the campaign and start tackling monoliths. Uniques are special items with unique effects and modifiers that are specific to the item itself. These items are typically used to enable specific builds or improve power in certain builds. Uniques that have forging potential can be forged to have affixes on them which will turn them into legendaries. Set items, much like uniques, also have unique effects and modifiers, but also unlock bonus effects and modifiers when worn with other pieces of the same set. Keep in mind that set items cannot be forged, so we cannot use them in crafting and won't be able to turn them into legendaries, nor will they scale into late game. Exalted items are items with tier 6 or 7 affixes. They tend to have more forging potential, so should be used as the base item in your crafting. The T6 or T7 affix on them can only be found as a drop, and affixes cannot be crafted past T5, so these items are very powerful and important to your late game. Legendary items are created when a unique item with legendary potential is fused with an exalt item of the same type. It can also be made by leveling up a Weaver's Will item. When you obtain a unique with a legendary potential of 0, 1, 3, or 4, you can combine it with an exalt of the same type with at least 4 affixes. When combined, the unique item will receive the number of affixes from the exalt equal to the number of legendary potential the unique item had. We can get really deep into legendary crafting, but that's a subject we can cover another time. Picking up every single item and shattering them may be a little impractical at first, since Rune of Shattering is like 2000 gold, and if we really pick up every single item, we'll just run out of inventory space every 5 seconds. So what's the best way to start? Get a loot filter. What this will do for you is filter and hide out all the unwanted items and affixes you do not want to see, so that everything you pick up is everything you want. This way you'll know that everything you are picking up can either be shattered for value or used in your build. Where can you get a loot filter? Well you can always make one yourself if you really like to tinker, or you could find one online. 
There's a lot of loot filter options online, but I'd recommend the loot filters on max roll for beginners. Or if you're following a guide, there should be a loot filter included. You can always import a loot filter from elsewhere and modify it for your own needs as well. You should also start leveling your faction ranks as soon as possible. This will be a great resource for equipment and affixes. We'll cover factions in more detail another time as well. Well, I hope you learned something here that will make your game more enjoyable. Last Epoch has a lot of depth and nuances in all of their mechanics, but I promise you, if you get the hang of it, you'll go far and have a lot of fun. There is so much more that I can cover regarding this subject, but I'd rather split them into separate videos. Otherwise, this one will just run too long. Please comment down below if there's anything specific you'd like to see, or just to say hi. I appreciate you making it to the end of this one. Thanks for stopping by, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.